Now, one thing that looks a little funny about this data is that every value is a string. But days to cancel looks like logically it should be an integer. Cancel date is clearly a date, and is canceled looks like a boolean. But they're all represented as strings. That's because the CSV library doesn't try to detect what type each column has. It's up to me to convert these data types if I want. I could wait and convert them later when I really need to. For example, every time I need to check whether is cancelled is true, I could use the code if is cancelled is equal to the string true, rather than the simpler if is cancelled that I could use if I had a boolean. However, I prefer to update all my data types up front because otherwise I tend to forget that they're not the type I expect and then I waste time debugging later. I've written some code for you, which you can find in your starter notebook, which updates a bunch of the types. Here you can see the main loop that's updating the types of the enrollments data. I didn't update the type of account key because even though the account key looked like an integer, I'm never going to do arithmetic with it. I'm not going to add up two account keys, for example, so the type might as well remain a string. I did convert the cancel date to a Python datetime object, and I wrote this function to do that for me. First, I check whether the date is actually the empty string, in which case I return none. For example, the cancel date could be an empty string if the student hadn't canceled yet. Otherwise, I use the stir p time function to parse the string as a date time. Don't worry if you've never seen the stir p time function. I'm going to take care of the date time handling for you in this lesson. Similarly, for the days to cancel function, I've written a function called parse maybe int. This function takes something that might be an integer, but might not be. For days to cancel, it might not be an integer if the student hasn't canceled yet. If the argument is the empty string, this function will return none, and otherwise it will cast the argument to an integer. Then for the isCancelled column, I check if the value is equal to the string true. So this comparison will return the boolean true if the field is equal to the string true, and false otherwise. The rest of the conversions are similar. The only other thing that's a bit strange is in the daily engagement table, where you can see that a few times I've cast a number to a float first and then an int. To see why, I'm going to scroll up and see what the lessons completed value looked like. The first value for lessons completed was 0.0. .0. Because of the decimal point, directly converting this string to an integer would fail. But logically, I know lessons completed should be an integer, since if you only complete half a lesson, you'll be marked as completing zero lessons, not 0 0.5. So once I've converted the value to a floating point number, I then convert it to an integer. I've done the same thing for number of courses visited and projects completed. This code is included in the starter notebook. Once you have everything set up locally, you should make sure you run each of these cells. That way, you'll have the correct types throughout the rest of the lesson. In general, make sure you run all the provided starter code, or some later code may not work correctly.